Hi guys, so we're back with another tutorial for Unity and we're going to be going on with the camera this time. Uh, last um, In our last tutorial we managed to get the camera to move uh, with a player but it's not exactly uh, the way we like it, it's a bit too stiff and well as, at least you can see there is some tilting so uh, uh, um, no, sorry. Um, so if we put to three, you're gonna see that the camera tilts a little bit when we move, and yeah, it's always tr getting um, sorry, keeping track of the player, which is good, but um, it's kind of it's not exactly what we want, right? Um, right now we are seeing only a little bit ahead. We're seeing as much behind as we're seeing ahead. And that's not usually what you want. You want to see more ahead than what you have behind because, you know, um, usually you want to know where you're moving at, not what you have behind. So let's to do that. Right now we, we cannot do it because, well, we can sort of do it, but it's not. Uh, so the first thing we do, if we want to do that, the first thing we do is, okay, we want to move a um, behind. This is, this is the C axis, so let's go, let's say, 10 meters behind. Yeah, well, it kind of works, right? Oh, wait, what is happening here? <laughs> the tank is not, it's always, this is always 10 meters behind the player in the C axis, in the global C axis. So basically, there, it doesn't matter where we're pointing at. What we want is to be at 10 meters behind the player. That means that this offset here must be um, dependent on the orientation. So um, let's start doing that. So let's. Uh, I'm going to show you two ways of doing it, okay? Because I think it's important for you to understand. So if we want this object to be behind the player, that means that we want the offset to be dependent on the current forward, right and up uh, values of the target. So um, let's do that. Still having it like this. We're gonna do um, yeah. So the target is gonna be so vector three offset is gonna be default offset dot x ten target dot right plus default offset um. Plus offsets default offset y times target dot up plus default offset dot c times target dot forward um, this. this is exactly the same thing we want for this um, here. Actually, uh, why don't we add a function here? Call get ideal position, and we do this. So basically, um, this is going to be this.
we also need to um, update the orientation to here or basically um, So good. We got the um, initially we we forgot to add the uh, look at the player. So we have our default orientation, default position, default orientation that are correct, and from there we will work. So let's see what happens. Um, okay, this seems to be working a lot better. I still that doesn't feel completely right. I mean, we're going behind and we're seeing a little bit, but uh, it's we cannot see a lot more. And if we go ahead, it definitely is not working. For me, is we're always having these in the center of the screen. That's because we don't have a um, an offset for the target. So maybe what we want is to leave it in zero, but have an offset so that we look ahead here. So we're going to call this the full position offset. And we're going to add a um, called a target offset, which may be like this. We will change it. Okay. So now um here in the update orientation instead of looking at the player what we're going to look is at the point that it depends on the player um so oh before we go on uh well or maybe this is a way of doing this okay so what we're doing here is okay assuming that what we want, what we have here in default position offset is local coordinates, and we are actually converting it to global coordinates. And this is exactly what we're doing. We're uh, multiplying the right, up, and forward, and then we're adding the position. If you think about it, that's exactly what we do with um, with a um, transformation matrix and um, homogeneous coordinates uh, and well if you need more info on this uh, please let me know in the comments and I will try to point you to the right videos or, or uh, documents on the internet so you can understand what uh, homogeneous coordinates are and the transformation matrix is and how it works anyway these is the same that we do with uh, with a matrix. So um, this is basically a local to world coordinates. So matrix for x4 to world is transform local to world matrix. And our ideal position is going to be a local to world multiply point and we pass the default was offset, the position offset. What we did before and what we're doing here is the same, at least as long as the scale is one. And our camera has a scale of one. So if I'm correct, When we're doing this, we're just going to have the same behavior. Whoops, I'm not correct. Oh, why not? What is the problem here? The 
default position offset and the original position. Back all to world. Oh, sorry, yep. Yeah, I made a mistake. It's not the transfer local to world, it's the target. Target local to world matrix. Because it's the target's uh, transformation, the one that we want to apply to the ideal position. Otherwise, we're using, we're transforming our position. Yeah. So, yeah, it seems to be working exactly as expected. We use it from minus 10, and yeah, it is working exactly as it was working before. Good. So, this is correct. And. So yeah, we could use a matrix to do this. And I want to show you yet another way of doing it. So basically, transform, the transform class in Unity has a uh, function to do this. Uh, transform point. So basically, yep, uh, we've done the same again. Oops, I made a mistake. Yep, I want to debug. I just want to ensure. Yep, that's right. Again, we are having the same behavior. So you can see that we have um, done the same thing in three different ways that's because they are all doing the same exactly the same thing they're just doing a local to world coordinate uh, system change so we're moving from local coordinates to world coordinates and the, the good thing about knowing how to do it in three different ways is that it means that you understand why it works so this is just a black box for you which internally does what we just did before, which is uh, the matrix uh, multiplication. And the matrix multiplication is not, but the, uh, but the, the doing what we've done before, but with a matrix, like the, um, the multiplying the x times the right, the y times the up, and the c times the forward vectors, and then adding the position. Actually, if you transform a uh, vector instead of a point, you're not adding the position. The homogeneous coordinate has a W value of zero, and then that means that the, the, the translation is ignored. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, going in, in depth on that, okay? Um, uh, if you want me to explain that further, please let me know, and maybe I'll do a video about that exactly at some point, okay? Anyway, uh, so we have the um, ideal position calculated in three different ways, which we have left it to this one. But this uh, helps because that then we're gonna do the same. We're gonna use the same format to calculate the uh, ideal target position. So the target pose is going to be a target transform point and default target offset. So target position. So yeah, we're going to keep in the forward here, which is um, well. This is something that we may be changing later. We'll see. Okay, so let's see what happens now. So we're gonna be doing is okay if we keep values the way they are, then nothing changes because we are just moving. So the target is not is not moved. But what if we at ten? Oh, now we are looking at the at the, a few meters ahead of the player. That means 
that we are uh, we get the tank right behind in the in the back of the screen, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay. Yeah, let's get that. Yeah, that's right. That's good. Now. Um, that's good, but we still have the problem of the uh, you know the velocity being a bit too much. So, what can we do about it? We could um, we could do something like we were doing. Well, let's how about we apply the same spring damped system to the orientation? So how how would that work? So right now, for the orientation, what we're doing is uh, is the, the the target position, but also the target forward, which is the part that is most important for us because that is the um, that is what it's making the the camera uh, follow the uh, direction of the player all the time. So um, yep, we could even. Um, We can we can consider uh, so the thing here is that we're not we're not moving a position we're, what we are doing is using a a, um, a vector that is basically an orientation so how about we we do that I mean we we apply the um, spring dumb system to the orientation that that uh, vector is representing. We could even simplify it further. We are we're gonna be assuming that our tank is always uh, seated on the XZ plane. What does that, what does that mean? That means that forward is always gonna be expressed as, uh, as a, a vector in the XZ plane, which means its its y component is always gonna be zero. Good. If the y component is always gonna be zero then it means that uh, we can express that vector which is to the vector which is all which is also going to be um, normalized which means this magnitude is going to be one as an angle so we can convert that 3d vector to a simple angle that angle is going to be uh, basically the uh, in, in polar coordinates we're going to be converting the the vector to the to polar coordinates and we can uh, we know that the size is always one so it's we are only interested in the angle. So we're gonna be keeping uh direction angle and we're gonna be keeping also if an angle velocity. Okay, so um, we're gonna have a function that is a uh, private float called uh, direction angle, and we're gonna pass a vector three. Direction. So returns it returns the angle uh, represented in the um, given vector on the XZ plane. So, um, what do we do here? First we're gonna make sure that this direction is valid. Basically, the way we do it is ensuring that the X and Z components are valid. Uh, so we do uh, tier dot Y is zero and Set is bigger than epsilon. Hmm. 
yes, you know, give them for while. Really, it's not gonna go past here. But anyway, yes, it's good to always return a valid value uh, and, and not a uh, not a number or something like that when you get uh, even when you get values that are not uh, inputs that are not valid. We're gonna use uh, an R time two. <clears throat> because arc tangent 2 allows us to get a value in the, uh, uh, the whole 360 degrees uh, with which uh, you cannot get with only the arc tangent, normal arc tangent. So we're gonna do um, this here. Um, Gonna be a um, cut direction angle uh, target forward, and we are gonna be um, using this. So we'll target position and we have to. So the deal the by default we have the forward position and the direction angle that's right. So we have by default we're looking at the right position, but then in the update we will be changing this. Sorry, not here. Calculate the deal target position. No. Um normalize in this angle So whether this function returns in the minus pi pi or in the zero two pi or in the minus two pi zero, we normalize this angle to a valid value. Actually, we're gonna create a function that does that. This is a um, float angle offset, which is going to be the ideal angle minus the di direction angle. Now we're going to do it. Um, that is going to be math f min 1.0 damping times dt. Uh, we're going to be applying angular velocity uh, stamp. Then we're going to be uh, doing um, accelerate angular acceleration is going to be angle offset times uh, spring. Okay. Uh, 
angular velocity plus equals um, axle times uh, the t. Oh, by the way, this angle offset we want to normalize it too. Because otherwise we could have um it's always is not normal, particularly with the offset. It's particularly important the offset is normalized because that way we cannot get because otherwise we'll try to go from zero to minus one uh, all the way through the other the way. I mean the, the shortest way is going then adding minus one, but there's another way which is adding three hundred and fifty nine degrees and you get the same result. And you know, if you try to go that way it's gonna look funny, so it's gonna look right. So finally we add the angle. Damn it. So it's gonna be um we just add this, then we do um okay. Zero, same angle. And we're gonna be using this. So right now what we've done is we've, we've applied the, exactly the same spring dump system that we use for the position to the um, orientation of the camera. It is not working as expected. It is working, but not as expected. And the thing is that to calculate the ideal target position, it would be probably good to use a, um, a custom um, uh, system of coordinates. So instead of using the target, which is what we're doing here, we're going to be doing We can be adding um, we can be using this as a forward the camera up as a forward. We can be using up as a 0 0.010 0 0.0. And we're gonna be doing right, it's gonna be uh, I think it's gonna be forward dot C 0, 0 minus forward dot x but I may be wrong with the size maybe this may be positive and this may be negative and we're going to be doing plus default target offset dot x times right plus default target offset dot y times up plus default target offset dot c times forward well let's see if this works a little bit better. This will make the um, target sluggish. Yeah. Hmm. 
So even with this, with this zero, we're getting some nice movement here that is not dependent on. It is not so. Uh, I mean, it still is pretty hard. So we could have even different values for this. But still, it's a lot better than before. It kind of like uh, this acceleration, deceleration when you're getting there, helps a lot. You not getting so dizzy when you're moving. It still gets very quickly, and we could, you know, fix that by changing the velocity of the, the tank, which is the rotation velocity maybe um, a little bit too high. You see the rotation is ninety. Like we could, I don't know, uh, we could have it to sixty, for instance, and a third of that. It may, it makes sense. I mean, it's definitely not that. Top. I mean, now it's a lot better. Um, well, uh, 90, I don't know. Yeah, it's better. It's still quite... It's, you can maneuver it. I'm just curious, how, what is the air tank? It's 180, let's put it in 92. So let's see. How the uh, tank behaves when it's got <laughs> this one. Uh, the tank is not able to um, to go to all the places it wants to go, um, which is very easy to fix. Just um, saying, okay, distance to the waypoint to advance the VM one is going to be two. So now it's it's yeah, a <laughs> lot better. And I think I like it better like this. So I'm gonna leave it like this. Still, um, yeah. So now, so uh, summarizing, what have we done? We have added some uh, orientation. So we have learned how to convert the uh, uh, a local position to a world position in three different ways, which are exactly the same, but with different tools. Uh, well, it gives the same result, but they're not exactly the same. They give different they're the same result, but they're different tools that so you have and give you the same result. and. They are conceptually the same, but they are, you know, in execution, they are slightly different. Then we have applied the spring bump system to the orientation of the of the tank too. This is quite cool um, because now we have a camera that actually moves with the player that is plays a little, that is looking a little bit ahead, so you know where you're gonna be moving, and that uh, moves smoothly with the player. Um, in our next video, we're gonna change the camera. We're gonna be moving it to be right behind the player, sorry, the, the tank. And we're gonna be, uh, well, not right behind, like little, looking a little bit from behind and up. And we're gonna be keeping this the same, but we're also gonna be, um, um, uh, making it so that uh, you 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 have more like a like a third person camera, and we're gonna be um, adding some extra parameters to the camera so you can't go further away from a certain distance uh, from the ideal position. So that you clamp the maximum distance you can go away. So you can uh, keep the um, spring dump system, and you can keep a loose spring dump system, but you're gonna um, uh, constrain that spring that system to a certain sphere so that you're, you're certain you're never going too far away from the position you want to be in. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you've learned something. And oh, I never say it, but well, it well, how about you if, if you enjoyed this, this video? 
it'd be good if we, if you could uh, click the thumbs up and you know like and subscribe see you guys in the next video bye